Hey everyone, so in this video I wanted to give you an insight into how I'm currently saving and investing and managing my money so that I can retire in my 30s. So you guys can get some tips on how you can retire early as well. And before we get into the video, I did want to mention that I think that there sometimes is a bit of a misconception when it does come to financial independence and retiring early. And this misconception is that the people that want to retire early hate their jobs and they hate working. But personally for me, I actually love my job and I actually really love working. And the reason why I'm trying to pursue financial independence is because I just want to have more freedom and more options in the way that I live my life and the things that I work on. Personally, I don't think that I ever will retire and I would really like to spend more time working on things that I'm truly, truly, truly passionate about, like this YouTube channel, which honestly brings me so much joy. So let's jump into the video. So the first thing that I do is I save and invest 60% of my income. So ever since I was 19 and I first started my personal finance journey, I did set myself a saving and investing goal. Even though at the time it was really, really impossible and really difficult to just make ends meet. I still try to save even a tiny, tiny bit of my income. And the biggest thing which has helped me save money is actually reusing my shower water. So I reuse my shower water to wash the dishes, wash my clothes and also use for making tea. I'm just kidding, I'm not that extreme when it does come to saving money. But here are some things which have really, really helped me save money. So the first thing that I do is I track my expenses. And the first time that I did this, it actually really shocked me because I was spending so much money and I just had no idea. So if you currently don't track your expenses, Brace yourself because it might be really tough for you, like it was for me, but I promise you it's a bit like going to the gym. The first time that you go to the gym, you're really sore all over, you feel crap, but then the next time that you go to the gym, it gets easier and then it gets easier. And then before you know it, you have a six pack and rock hard abs. And that for me is pretty much like tracking my expenses and being on a financial independence journey. The first time I did it, I was really bad. I was really struggling, but now I feel like it's a lot easier for me and I can actually save money without really needing to try very hard, which is, yeah, I'm really happy with how it's all going. So the second thing that I do is I try to save money where I can and especially on things which don't cause a lot of pain and doesn't cause a lot of friction. For example, my electricity provider. It doesn't really matter which electricity provider that I'm with, so long as I'm with the cheapest electricity provider. So I always try to find the cheapest electricity provider or phone provider and then switch if I do find a good deal. And by the way, I've also included some links in my description below to my phone provider and my internet provider, which both are actually really good internet and phone providers. And if you do use the links in in the description below, you actually get a bill credit and I will also receive a bill credit. So if you're looking to switch internet providers to something that's fast, but still also quite affordable, check out the link below. So the next thing that I do is I meal prep and I try to cook at home as much as possible so that I'm not spending money on eating out. And also I get to save more money so when I do go out to eat, I can really enjoy myself and have a good time and not feel bad knowing that I've already spent so much money on takeout. So this has been a really big thing for me and making my coffee at home, making my lunch at home has really helped me save a lot of money but also helped me feel a little bit healthier as well. And the final thing that has really helped me save money is just prioritizing the things which are important to me. And they might be completely different to what's important to you. For example, I noticed that I was buying quite a lot of clothes back when I first started my financial independence journey. 
I was buying these clothes, but then I wasn't using them and they would just sit in my wardrobe and they were like cheap clothes that I just hated. And I was just thinking to myself, why am I buying all these clothes that I don't actually use? And after I realized this and started tracking my expenses, I started to really cut down my clothing budget. And now the only time that I really buy clothes is when I'm on holidays overseas. I also enjoy the clothes that I buy overseas so much more because it just reminds me of being overseas. Like for example, this dress I actually got in Singapore and whenever I wear it, I'm just like, hmm, Singapore was a good time. So that might be completely different for you though. You might be somebody who really loves spending money on clothes and maybe you don't really like spending money on travel. And then it's up to you what you want to prioritize in your life. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos about investing and personal finance. So the second thing that I do is I invest in order to build passive income in my ETF. So inflation is the silent killer of wealth. And I've heard of inflation before. Obviously you learn these kinds of things in school, but it was never really drummed into my mind. I didn't really think that inflation was something that just happened to all of us. And it was something that we didn't really see until I started my personal finance journey. And it really, really stuck in my mind knowing how big inflation actually is. So each year our money is worth about 2% less each year with inflation. And if you leave all of your money in a high interest savings account, then your money is essentially worth less over time because a lot of high interest savings accounts are only about one to 2% at best. So at best your money isn't losing money or it is actually losing money. So that's why it's really important to invest so that our money appreciates in value rather than depreciates in value with inflation. And that's also why it's important to start investing as early as you can. So I personally like to put most of my money into safe investments like ETFs, because this allows me to easily diversify into the world's biggest companies. And by the way, an ETF is basically like a stock that you can buy and sell on the stock market, but it's a stock that actually contains little pieces of about 100 or 200 different companies. And there are many different types of ETFs that you can buy. You can buy some really specialized ETFs. For example, you can buy technology ETFs, or you can buy Australian ETFs, or you can buy US or Asian ETFs. There are lots of different ETFs that you can choose from. So I really do like all of the options available now for ETFs, it allows me to kind of, I guess, still feel like I'm picking a stock, but still be able to take advantage of that diversification. So the average return on investment per year for an ETF is from five to 10%. Some years it can be more, some years it can be less, but that's why it's really important to try and hold on to your investments for a really, really long time. And just to show you how big a difference investing in ETFs ETFs can make. Let's use this example. Let's just say you have $10,000 to invest and then you make regular investments of $500 per month and you achieve an average return of 7% per year. In 30 years, your $180,000 investment will be worth $691,000, which is just massive. And that is the power of compound interest. Essentially, that 7% interest that you make kind of compounds over time. So the interest that you receive makes more money and then your money makes more money. And that's basically how compound interest works. So another thing that I am investing in in order to retire in my 30s is actually property. So I started doing some research on this topic. Which one is a better investment, property or shares? And I'm really biased. I was 100% thinking shares is definitely a better investment, hands down. But actually after doing my research, I found that 
property is actually a really good investment as well. And the reason why it's a really great investment is essentially you are leveraging your money, which means that you're borrowing money from the bank in order to invest. And that is why property is a really, really great investment because the gains that you can make on $500,000 compared with $100,000 is immense. It's huge, especially when you look at it over a lifetime. And of course, there definitely are pros and cons when it does come to real estate investment versus stock market investing. For example, with real estate, it's not as liquid. It's not like shares where you can just sell your shares and then they're sold within a couple of minutes or a couple of hours. With property, you do have to wait a couple of months to find a buyer and then actually sell your property. And there are quite a few costs involved. For example, you might need to fix some things. You might need to renovate the property and you also do need to pay for solicitors and real estate agents and things like that. And you might be thinking as well, well, Queenie, you can use leverage when it does come to stock market investing as well. And you are absolutely right. You can use leverage when it does come to stock market investing. You can borrow money from the bank in order to invest in the stock market. But the interest rates when you do get a loan for investing in the stock market are a lot higher. So at the time of recording this video, the interest rate for stock market investing is around five to 6%, which is really high. Whereas the interest rate for a mortgage is only 2.52%. At least that's what I'm currently paying on my variable interest rate, which is really, really low. So I would love to know what your thoughts are on property investing down in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? And why? I would love to know your thoughts. So another thing that I am investing in is related to property, but actually renovations. So recently last year, I renovated my kitchen, which has just been life changing, not only from improving my life because I just have a dishwasher, which saves me so much time. I love my dishwasher so much. And also having an oven that works and a stove that works really well, but it also improves the property price of this apartment that I've bought. So we're actually going to renovate the bathroom as well this Christmas. I am so, so excited about it. And I would love to know if you guys would like to see a video of the before and the after for my bathroom. I'm really, really excited. We've been shopping around for different contractors and tradies to do the bathroom and yeah, I'm just so excited that it's all just, it's all happening. And when we do buy the investment property, the goal is to also renovate that property as well. We're looking to get a place which needs a renovation, but maybe isn't too bad so we don't have to knock it down completely. So yeah, that's the goal. So investing a lot in property at the moment. So I've run the numbers and after about 10 years of investing this way, so basically investing in ETFs and then once I have enough money investing in raw properties and potentially a mix of properties and ETFs, I should have enough money to be able to retire by the time that I'm about 34. And I'm currently 24 right now, so that should be about 10 years away. I personally don't want to fully retire, but perhaps even maybe semi-retire and continue with the side hustle like this YouTube channel, something that just brings me joy. So that is the goal and that is how I'm currently investing so that I can retire in my 30s. And I would love to know how you guys are currently investing down in the comments below. I read every single one of your comments. I would honestly love to know your thoughts. And if you did like this video, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos about investing and personal finance. I'll see you in the next video. And I've also put a link in the description below to a completely free Discord community where you can chat with other like-minded investors who are also on a path to reach financial independence. It's completely free and you can join using the link below. And if you'd also like to see more videos, I've put some links to some videos here and also a link to my home tour video. So if you'd like to see a look into what the kitchen renovations look like and what my home looks like, you can watch this video up here.